Hey gang, welcome back. We're going to talk a little bit more about ways to ensure that horses remain supple in their body. As horses get stronger, like us, they have a tendency to kind of tighten up and become a bit more restricted. I find that primarily, I know this sounds really simple, but I know I find that primarily where horses tend to get rigid, rigid and st stiff, as we call it, is by simply doing too much of the same thing, especially if they're dressage horses. There's so much coming out every day and moving at the same speed, usually mostly in the trot, uh, same gait, same speed, similar kinds of patterns you're riding day after day. And what that does is it creates less range of motion, stickier tissue, all the stuff that we don't want, right? So it's necessary to find ways to do something else, which is why we're out here in the field, even though it's a little bit muddy today. I use a lot of my schooling out here in the field because it does let me get out of my rut where I might otherwise become repetitive. One of the easiest things you can do is ride in different speeds. So we'll have Samantha demonstrate for us what that looks like, right? So she is going to be uh, warming up Arlington, who's a big half flinger here. And Arlington is the kind of horse that tends to be a little um, a little lazy, not bad, but people's tendency is to be like, come on, let's go. And then they end up riding him in the same, at the same rate of speed every day. How he moves better is if you have different speeds. So we'll see, I've asked Samantha to warm him up in we, what we call his pony trot. You hear the classical masters in dressage write about this and reference this. It's just a little jog trot. You're not trying to have impulsion. You're not worrying about your buddies watching you ride saying, your horse isn't pushing from the hind end. You're simply just letting his joint spacing move and flex and swing through his back. You're just getting a little bit of softness and relaxation in his body. And then after you spend a period of time at that, then you can move up to a slightly more defined working trot. That's the term we would use in dressage, a working trot to say, okay, now I'd like a little bit more speed. And so now Samantha's, you can see he thought he was supposed to canter there. So now Sam's asking him to move out a little bit more. You'll notice that now he's fully tracking up into his front prints. He has a little bit more animation and he's covering a little bit more ground every speed. So what we'd like you to do, Sam, is when you get back to your starting point, go ahead and downshift again to that slower trot so we can look at that and see what changes about Arlington's body mechanics, if anything. Uh, but the point is, especially with a heavy bodied horse like this, it is so necessary to be able to have uh, those different speeds available to you, those different stride lengths, those different joint ranges of motion to mitigate the amount of tightness a big bulky horse like this would carry yeah there we go so sam downshifted and that was actually a nice smooth downshift good so we see that right now arlington's not as fully tracking up into his front prints but notice he is starting to relax his back and his neck he's not in as hollow of a posture as he was in the slightly faster trot so what does this tell you this horse needs to play between those two speeds to then settle in the ideal balance that was a perfect demo, Sam. Thank you. So let's have you walk and then join us here in the middle for a second, Sam. So that's your first takeaway. Just ride in different speeds in terms of doing less of the same thing, which is our point here, right? Our second, the second thing that I encourage riders to do is to use the two-point position or light seat. So both of us now will go out onto the track and demonstrate a light seat. It's not, we're not in jumping saddles. This is not a classic two-point position. But basically, we're just going to keep our butt in a hovering seat. I find that this is especially important for people who do a lot of trail riding uh, and or western riding. Um, many of those riders spend a lot of time sitting fully. Now, that's not a bad thing, but none of us are symmetrical as human beings. And the point is, even if you're a pretty balanced rider, the horse's long back muscles are affected by all of our asymmetries, right? We're, we're always applying uneven pressure to their long back muscles. And when they're moving over time, that accumulation of uneven pressure starts to change their gait. So one of the easiest, you notice I like things to be simple. One of the easiest things you can do is simply unburden their back 
and keep them in a nice steady rate of travel. So let's just go ahead and do that together. We're just going to trot, Sam. This just gives you all a chance to see two different horses moving. So I'll start out just in a normal uh, posting trot. And then I'll come up into what I like riders to do with their light seat. And again, like I say, especially Western riders or riders who are used to riding in kind of a bigger, heavier saddle, which does a lot of your support for you. So I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna keep my same rein length. I'm not doing this with my arms. I'm gonna keep my arms here and I'm gonna come up into a hover seat. So my butt is out of the saddle, just hit a little muddy patch there. And I'm keeping the same rhythm, right? One, two, one, two, I'm looking forward. And what this does is allow Diamante to just find some healthy movement. He's picking his way through the mud here. There we go. And just cruise and just get rhythmic and not have me inundate him with my habituated dressage training. And then you can look at Arlington, the horse behind me, for a totally different uh, to body type and movement. So getting up in the two-point position or light seat, this is also incredibly good for developing rider fitness, but that might be a separate video that we do for y'all. Okay, now we'll just resume our posting trot. And I notice that Diamante has a bit more freedom now than when I first demonstrated. Good boy, he just let out a nice big sigh. So you can do it in your warm-up, or you could do it partway through your session. The good thing about being out here in the field is riders are more likely to break up their routine. It's hard to get arena riders to get up in two-point position. They, they're overthinking everything and micromanaging. So we'll come on back to a walk. And we'll demonstrate our last little bit here on how to break up the sameness. So what we're going to do, and because it's a little muddy out here, we just had a big rainstorm this past week. So we're kind of working with the elements and making the video today. Um, we're going to demonstrate the canter. So I'll go ahead and go first and then I'll have you go, Sam, and we'll just kind of talk about what I want you to demonstrate, but we'll have you hang out over here for a second. I always advocate for riders. You have to learn to love the canter. Now, many people have a horse where the canter is just like a bone rattling, teeth jarring experience. And I know that's no fun. But even if you do it online as opposed to riding, it is necessary just to get it done. Uh, it is so good for the horse's body mechanics, for loosening his back, for developing that range of motion through the spinal joints. If riders ride, as I said in the beginning, too long in the same gait, same speed, you just develop restriction. So canter is one of the simplest ways to mitigate that. But let me demonstrate something real quick, because when I say canter, many of us, I mean, especially right now, because, you know, I'm on video, so many of us want to look good and have our horse in a good balance. And when things aren't going well, the temptation is to kind of avoid the canter because, you know, this video could make its way on YouTube and people could say, well, Jack has no idea what he's doing, right? What's important is to remember the horse just needs to move sometimes. Like forget about your friends looking at you and analyzing you. So I'm just going to get Diamante up into a canter. I don't care how messy the transition was. I'm going to be up in two point position. I'm just going to let him move. Now this is something for years as a dressage trainer. I didn't do because I was too busy trying to get my horse on the bit. I was too busy trying to make a 20 meter circle. Oops, that's no big deal. We'll just go back up to the canter. Horses just need to canter. Now I'm not letting him race off. That's not what I'm saying. But the, so I always tell riders, there's all kinds of different canters. This is not a collected canter. This is not the canter you're going to do if you're going to a horse show. This is a whatever canner. That's what I call it. It's a whatever canner. And don't forget, your horse just needs whatever movement, okay? They just need to move. Now, let's say I've done this for a couple minutes. There we go. I was waiting for Diamante to let go. He was kind of tight in his rib cage. Notice now he's starting to let go in his rib cage. He's going to be a lot more comfy for me to sit on. Otherwise, it's like a tight drum. So now I'll start to sit down. He thought we were going to stop. I told him no. I think we'll keep going. And now I'll ask him to get a little bit more organized, not collected, but like a working canter as much as I can today in the muddy field. So you start to see him come a little bit more uphill and the rhythm gets a little bit more clear with the jump every step. So it's not that having the whatever raggedy canter beforehand precludes my ability to then get him organized. To the contrary, it helps me 
get it more organized, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at Arlington behind us, the Halflinger now. And Sam, what I'll have you do is, if it's too slippery, you don't have to hold them in a canner, maybe just go in and out of the canner a little bit. And we'll have you use your two point position because this horse is, a, uh, Arlington is a great example of a horse that, um, actually when he came to me for training, he hadn't been cantered because they were waiting to get, you know, other things more balanced. But if you hold off on waiting for everything else to get more balanced, you could spend a long time before you ever get to the canner. So that's perfect. I like that Sam didn't micromanage there. It was a little bit of a messy transition, but there's a time and a place for that. The horse just needs to move, okay? And not be um, prettied up or tidied or micromanaged. And so you see now Sam is using the light seat that we talked about before, because that allows you to ride a horse that's more rough in his canter and help his balance better. Because if you're getting throttled all over the place, um, that was fine, Sam. And if you can make another transition, maybe just try one more time. That was perfect. If you're getting throttled all over the place and struggling for your balance, um, you're not going to be able to help the horse just get comfy and confident about the canter. So we can see that Arlington here is pretty confident. He has a relaxed attitude. His expression is not worried or tense or resentful. He just needs to find rhythm which on a muddy track is probably not gonna to happen today, <laughs> but he just needs to find his footfall, right? And so being in that two point or light seat position that I referenced earlier is often the fastest way to help a horse like that just kind of settle in and find his gait. And as, as, as I said, the benefits of cantering are so terrific for improving everything else. The scapula glide, the ability of the horse to lift his rib cage, the, the necessity of breathing deeply into the rib cage, all of these things um, are enhanced by cantering. So and again, another simple but highly effective way of breaking up the sameness or just repeating things ad nauseum to the point where you have a lot of rigidity. So that's been our theme out here, and I wanted to be in the field, as I said, because it is a perfect demo of getting out of your normal rut um, and avoiding a, a similar batch of exercises, and especially riding your horse at the same speed. And trail riders are not off the hook, because a lot of them are sort of moving at the same speed if you take an honest assessment of, your, of what you're actually doing while you're out there on the trail. Find ways to, to spice it up. Even if you're just stuck at the walk because it's muddy, you can still ride like four different speeds, yeah? So thanks for tuning into this video, and hopefully you all have generated some questions that we can cover together in the live Zoom chat.